Be strong. Be strong. Welcome to another interview from the series Where Does My English Come From? And today we have family over. Gabi is here to share a bit of her path from being a student to English teacher, living abroad and raising a child in between two languages. So just sit by the table and enjoy, but don't forget to subscribe and activate the notifications so you don't miss any of these amazing talks and other videos that will certainly help you learn more. Gavin, before we get started, yes, would you just introduce yourself, tell a little bit about what you do, where you come from, where you live, etc, etc. Okay, so my name is Gabriella, but you all can call me Gabby, and I am this guy's cousin, by the way, his favorite cousin. <laughs> true, true. Always like that. <laughs> well, obviously, I'm from Brazil. I was born and raised in Sao Paulo. Um, and I moved to the U.S. Right now, I live in Florida, close to Orlando. I say Orlando because it's the area, but the name of the city is Davenport. It's about like 15 to 20 minutes from Disney Parks. And yes. And yeah, so I moved here when I was 28, almost 29 to get married with my husband. He's American. <laughs> and yeah, so I've been living here since 2017. So it's been four years, over four years now. We have a boy, Theo. He's uh, two and a half years. And well, Daniel works, I work, and Theo goes to the daycare. And that's how life is. <laughs> Great, really good. So but the idea of the interview is actually to learn a little bit about your experience with English, yes, your contact with it. So can you tell me what was the first contact with the language that you can, you know, think of? I think with with my dad, because so my dad it spoke English. So mm -hmm. and then he would kind of throw one thing here and there, you know, teach mm -hmm. us how to say like the animals or something like that. Um, and then I remember that sometimes, sometimes when he would travel abroad and then he would come home, he would talk while he sleep and he would talk in English. So that type of thing, you know, and, you know, like he liked it. And I remember that sometimes one day, I'll never forget that he was in the bathroom with the TV on. He was like just getting ready for something. And it was something in English and I was watching the TV and he was like, oh, he said this, this and that. And I'm like. Hmm, okay <laughs> just showing off but anyways um so yeah i think it was that and obviously at school but mm -hmm. we know that english at school is just <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah um i said nowadays it, it's getting slightly better yes but yet it's not what it is you know when we go to uh, either a more dedicated school, yes, a language school or something like that, yeah. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, learning, yes, as a student, were you an applied student? Not that much. So what were the things that helped you, you know, in order to learn it better? Okay, in general, I was like a median, median high student, okay, median, median high. With English, I was like on the high end of of you know student level whatever mm -hmm. but i start learning learning english when i was when i was 18 i i um i went to an english school and i did like maybe one book like so like six months or so and then i started college so i majored in portuguese and english what we call letras but i didn't learn much and also <laughs> At college, when it was half of the of the the period of the course, I was like, ah, I don't know if that's what I want to do, blah, blah, blah. So I wasn't like attending much, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyways, but then I got a job at an English school. So I had to teach kids. So my class was from seven to 13. And I had to talk to them in English 100% of the time. So eight hours a day, five times a week. So that's when things started, started to get better. And then from that school, I also thought in like a regular English school, you know? So uh, what, I, what it's really nice is that, especially when you're a teacher, 
you learn when you prepare to give your classes. No. It's so true, isn't it? people think that the teacher knows everything and that, and that's not true. So it's just, so that's kind of when it started. So I wasn't like a super student, maybe in a class class, maybe a year and a half tops. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then basically I learned by working, preparing, and just living life. <laughs> just living life. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's really, really nice. And a, a question that I normally make people, yes, here, is uh, if you had that, that switch that turned on, you know, uh, a point of your learning process in which you said, wow, well, man, I can communicate in English, I can use it on a daily basis or maybe i can you know <laughs> i can survive so did you have that so i'll never forget that i was that i wasn't teaching at the school yet i wasn't teaching at the school yet so i was uh downtown like close to paulista close to mackenzie university mm -hmm. and then i was going with my ex-boyfriend to the to the bus stop and mm -hmm. this guy stopped to talk to us and he said that he was a a gringo, you know, American or whatever, and he needed money for this and that. And that was the one that spoke with him and he was speaking in English. And I was like, oh, so I, you know, I understood everything he said. I was able to make myself clear, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that was one, but also I think when I came, I mean, obviously at the school, because I had to communicate, but you don't know like because you are a teacher and supposedly you know more than your students so you cannot measure mm -hmm. how good your english is um so when i came here to the u.s first time in 2014 as an out pair i had to have i have four days of training with american people mm -hmm. and i need only to speak english so that's when i was like okay yes i really can get it you know like i'm <laughs> understanding everything they're saying By the way, the guy from Sao Paulo, yes, uh, was that a scam or uh, was it true? I have no idea. People like people say, I think it was a scam. Maybe it was a scam. I said, I don't care. I spoke in English with him, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and why you were still learning? Yes. Uh, what was the most difficult part, session whatsoever, yes, that you had? So was it the grammar? Was it listening? Did you have any, any sort of difficulty like that i still do because i mean we don't know everything so like the perfect tenses for me mm -hmm. are like i'm like has been, been you know it's just something that i still have to study more you mm -hmm. know because you kind of always get because it's not that uh, time is different in english than what we are using portuguese mm -hmm. but not too much but a little bit to make you confused So, yeah, <laughs> like listening, I don't have problem with listening, talking, because I have a friend, she's mm -hmm. from Uruguay, and she speaks, obviously, Spanish, she speaks mm -hmm. Portuguese perfectly, and English as well, and mm -hmm. one day she told me something, she said, because I was, you know, trying to speak in Spanish, and my Spanish is not that good, but I can make myself understandable, you know, no mm -hmm. so she said this, um, it doesn't matter if you're making mistakes when you're talking, when you're speaking with someone in a foreign language, the language that you, it's not your first language, you know? Mm -hmm. What is important is that you make the person understand you. Because everybody gets like, oh, I can understand really good, but I cannot speak. Mm -hmm. You have to try. Because if you don't try, you know, it doesn't matter if you say, I, I didn't know. You know, that person understood what you, what you meant. Mm -hmm. So that's what, exactly. So that's what, so yeah, I think most like the, the gram, the, the grammar, the perfect tenses, past perfect, present perfect, future perfect, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. In order to learn English, what were the things that you did or maybe that you, that you had that helped you, you know, attain, retain, memorize or well, learn in general? That's what I always used to say uh, to tell my students and I tell people when they come to ask me um, as a person that learned like mostly by myself you have to listen to English so I would listen to a lot of music I always enjoyed music in English it was just something that I grew up with uh -huh. and watching movies so if you have that movie or show 
that you you already know a hundred times you already know you know just put that movie or show in english with english subtitles because you know what they're saying already so you can pay attention in other stuff so that helps a lot got it dude <laughs> and obviously it's really important that you try to communicate great like because it doesn't matter if you know how to read a freaking whole book in english <laughs> If you don't go and talk to someone, you always gonna be that, you know, like it's not gonna mm -hmm. flow. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like going to university, learning how to be an engineer and never working as an engineer type mm -hmm. of thing. So it's really important. And, you know, luckily we have so many tools right now online. When I was learning, there wasn't like a many tools like there's now, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So you can find websites and apps where you can talk to people. So, mm -hmm. and back then, uh, who did you, who did you have? Yes, in order to 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 practice. Yes, who did you find? What were your your sources? <laughs> When I started teaching. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's That's true, right? So nowadays we have so many apps, man. It's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. When I start. When I started teaching, that's when I felt that my English came from here to here. Right. Because I was talking and I was making mistakes and then I was, you know, fixing those mistakes and so on and on and on. All right. So see, guys, a great hint. Yes. Maybe you should start teaching. Teach your kid. Teach your, your grandpa, your, your dad. Okay. Yes, that's a good one. So when I was little, the stuff that I would learn at, at school... I would put all my teddy bears, my plush toys, <laughs> and I would teach them. The ghosts are throwing pies. Blah, blah, blah. So that's how I would study for stuff. Blah, blah, blah. So just do that. You know, like go to a friend, to your sister, your brother, whatever, your nephew, say, hey, here. Okay, let me explain you verb to be. Verb to be is like this. Blah, blah, blah. You know, you don't need to be a teacher in a school. You can teach You can even teach yourself in the mirror. You know? That's great. <laughs> you can also record a video with your phone and then you delete it. Nobody needs to watch it. Yeah, that's a good one too. <laughs> All right. And then uh, as we are talking about teaching, yes. Did you uh, have any, any sort of role model, someone that you looked up to uh, when preparing your lessons, you know, when you were the teacher? I had an amazing co-worker in this first school that I that I thought. Um, and she, I mean, she was, I, I was really inspired by her, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't think I did stuff like her. But, you know, I was like, oh, she's so great. I want to be like her one day, mm -hmm. you know, but I always had like my own way to do stuff, you know. Yeah, I do, yeah. Yes, you always you always take something and you input your own personality into it, right? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Okay, good. Uh, I think the first time that you you commented, you have already mentioned, yes, that you used to go to U.S. Yes, with your dad, right, in order to visit no, the parks, right? No, never been to the U.S. with my dad. Oh boy. My mom and my dad came to Disney for like 17 days, and they left us behind. <laughs> Okay, so that's something that we should complain with your mom. Yeah, now it's your turn. Yes, no, it was your turn now. Yes, exactly. First time I came was in 2014, April 2014, as an out pair. Oh, that was yes. my very first time in the US. Okay, and, and how was that? So, um, how did you prepare for it? Uh, to, to, to which extent did you feel you know the difference between? Being uh, a student uh, and learning English as a student, being a teacher, learning as a teacher, and then coming, you know, to real life and having this the first, the first few weeks, my head will hurt constantly because you're not used to, I don't know if that happened when you went to Canada, because you're not used to, you know, listen just one language all the time. And then you have to, because you're like right now, people ask me, do you think in Portuguese or in English? I don't know. I think, I, I think it's just automatic, you know, mm -hmm. but before I had to 
listen in English, think in Portuguese, especially when I was going to say something. I'll have to kind of translate in my mind and then say. So it's just a lot of information happening and my head hurts. And I've mentioned that to other people and it happens to them as well. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, like when you first come and you're, you emerge in a culture and you have to speak that language 100% of the time, it's just a lot, you know? So yeah, it's a lot to cope with. That was heavy, but, but then it passed. That was fine. <laughs> All right. Talking about the, the, the um, your knowledge, yes, in English, right? Uh, how much do you owe it to your experience abroad? How much do you owe it to your uh, to, to your learning process here in Brazil yet? So um, when it comes to structure, grammar, and all that, like the um, time for the tenses and all that, it's student teacher you know mm -hmm. because i had to prepare to give a class so i'll learn so on and on and on but when it comes to and obviously um getting kind of how can i say this kind of lose to talk mm -hmm. to speak uh -huh. also as a teacher but learn feeling more comfortable like in in a sense of I feel that I, I know more in terms of what re English really is living mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Because when you're learning something, you don't, like we learn stuff, you know, in that way. So like, I am a girl, you know what I mean? Like uh, very, yeah, something like a little a, bit more blocked, yeah. And traditional, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, even the other day I was doing some exercises in Spanish and then my friend, she's from Mexico, she was like, yeah, you know, they put that stuff, but we don't talk like that. And mm -hmm. it's the same in Portuguese, you know? Uh -huh. So then living here, I feel that I have, I flow a little bit better, you mm -hmm. know, like for instance, <clears throat> my husband, again, he's American, he's from Texas. He say, I remember he would say, oh, I... I don't know. He was like telling me a story or something. And then he would say, oh, I, I forget. And then I would be like, isn't it for God that you had to say? Like, I uh, see, right? And then it was like, okay. yeah, but you know, you just say, I forget. And I was like, okay. I keep saying I forgot, but he keeps saying I forget. <laughs> but it's like when we do um, Eu Viela. We mm -hmm. know that it's not proper Portuguese, eu avi, but we, mm -hmm. you know, kind of something like that. So you kind of right. start learning a few things here and there. And though, oh yeah, can I tell the story? Of yeah, that? please do so. As an au pair, I only spent two months here as an au pair, but that's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. So I remember that I would listen to my host mom saying, oh, blah, 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 though. No, 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 And I was like, what the? heck is that dough <laughs> and then one day i asked her her dad because they were also saying blah 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 dough and i was like uh -huh. what is dough so and then though though was like what the heck and then finally i found out that it's basically a but but at the end of the phrase <laughs> and i was like so weird and then now i use it all the time well, uh, uh, you, you mentioned about Daniel, yes, and I know it's something completely out of context here, right? But I actually never knew the complete story of how you guys met. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if maybe I have a terrible memory, okay? As, uh, I remember a couple, you know, some, some extracts, you know, of the story, <laughs> but not the complete one. Oh. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> I came to Orlando in 2016 with a friend. March 2016 for my first very first time at Disney so mm -hmm. excited so cool and Daniel and I we met in a dating app so <laughs> I told this friend of mine he's uh he's gay and then I was like oh let's check you know let's check the guys here just to pull around and see you know uh -huh. uh, and then Daniel and I start talking and he wanted we start talking like on a Sunday and he wanted to meet. And I was like, I don't have time to meet because when you come here 
on a vacation, like you leave at seven and you come back at midnight. So you don't have time to do anything else. And I was like, no, yeah, sure. No, but I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Then on a Tuesday, my friend and I, we are like, kind of like brother and sister. Mm -hmm. Fight and that type of stuff. Yeah. So then on Tuesday, we had an argument. And I was like, oh my goodness, I need a break from him. (laughs) And then on Wednesday, uh, we went to Epcot and Epcot was closing like at 9 p.m. And we were really tired. So we left a little bit earlier. And then I said, okay, we can meet. And then we met. And then I went back to Brazil. Since we start uh, talking through the app, Mm -hmm. we spoke every single day since then. So I went back to Brazil. That was March. Then I came back in May for a week. That's when we started dating officially. Uh Back to Brazil. And then in September, I went to Ohio to work. And then I came down here for a couple weeks on vacation to stay with him. That's when we got engaged. We got engaged at Epcot during the day before Hurricane Matthew, I think, came. Oh, boy. It was, it was quite a remarkable thing. then. <laughs> yeah. And then we, we got engaged. I went back. He went to Brazil in January. Mm-hmm. And then I, to meet my family, obviously, because, and then I moved <laughs> here in April 2017. Wow, man. Uh, um, how long have you been married? Now, four years. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, time really flies, man. Well, this is really cool. And nowadays, so what are you doing nowadays? Yes, you're working there. Yes, a- so I work in a dental office, um, and just as a curiosity, here in the U.S., um, for instance, if you go to the dentist, the dentist is going to do dentist stuff, so root canals, so I work for an orthodontist, so mm-hmm. braces, so the only thing he does is brace it, that's it. He's not going to do a cleaning. He's not going to do a feeling. He's not going to do a root canal, anything like that. Mm-hmm. And it's one dentist and we have seven assistants. So the dentist come, the, the orthodontist in a case, he comes, he sees what has to be done. And then he tells the assistant, okay, we're going to do this wire. We're going to do this. Blah, blah, blah. And then she executes most part of the job. All right. and then there's some, some things that he's the one that has to do it. But anyway, so I'm the, I'm the office um, office coordinator uh, in the office for over three years now. Wow. And yeah, and a mom full time. I think that's the hardest of the jobs. <laughs> they are they are heroes. I, uh, sometimes I don't know how to set a cops with it <laughs> with a couple of stuff because it, it it's different. Yes, the way that the, the babies you know come to us dads yes and go and go to the, the to, to mommies completely different you come from brazil daniel yes is an american and you've got your little boy yes Del. uh how is it yes to 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 raise uh, a bilingual child because we were just talking yes before we started recording yes that you you you, you were talking to to him uh, i think he was with you guys yes on uh on that um it's funny because my daniel my husband he doesn't speak portuguese he knows a few words now, something here and there, but he doesn't speak Portuguese. So, Theodore. So, Theo, he, I speak in Portuguese with him. Sometimes I say stuff in English as well. Mm-hmm. And Daniel obviously only speaks in English with him. Mm-hmm. Um, the daycare he goes now, it's a, a Brazilian lady. So, he also has Portuguese there because I really wanted there that. Mm-hmm. What you want to tell tea? Yeah, no, okay. And then, so now he's it's so nice because okay, when my mom was here, my mom spent it um like 10 months with us, mm-hmm. and then so she so it's she beautiful. was um speaking with him in Portuguese a lot, so he was you know in contact, in contact with Portuguese a lot mm-hmm. when she went back before we started with the new daycare. Yes, I'm going to conversation, huh? Before we started with the new daycare, um, Daniel was staying with him most of the time. Mm-hmm. So he was 
barely not speaking Portuguese. It was English and English and English and English. And I was like, oh, right. dang. But now, <laughs> now he knows that he speaks Portuguese with me and mm -hmm. English with, with dad. For mm -hmm. instance, what I was uh, telling you earlier, we were just in bed this morning, the three of us. And then he looked at me and he said, Mamãe, and he calls me Mamãe and Daniel Papai. And Daniel refers to himself as Papai as well. Uh -huh. So he said, Mamãe, é, eu quero ver a tataluga. Quer ver a tataluga? <laughs> quer ver a tataluga, né, filho? Ah. Tá bom. <laughs> and then I looked at him and said, fala com seu pai. And then he looked at his dad and he's like, Papai, I want to see the turtle. <laughs> see the turtle. <laughs> so now he knows it's it's so interesting so mm -hmm. fun so fun. yeah and uh something that i um actually there was a a, a whole debate yes a couple of, couple of years yes honestly i think we still have that sort of debate yes which is oh uh, is it dangerous yes to grow a bilingual child so to teach english for toddlers yes and etc and Exactly. That we, we already have studies about that. And you see, we have one more person here. Okay. So <laughs> being a mom of a bilingual child, he flushed the sticker. He flushed the sticker in the toilet. Theodore. Você me faz o favor de não pôr o, o sticker no Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the second time he does that today. That's going that's going for the for the channel. That's certainly going for the channel. <laughs> so, being a mom of a child that is bilingual and being a teacher of kids in Brazil, there's no harm. The best thing you can do if you can, if it's possible, it's raise your child being bilingual, trilingual, something. Because first, they gonna they will never forget both languages. Their brains, they start, like there's studies that they show that their a brain of a bilingual uh, a child works in a different way. So normally they're a little bit smarter than other kids or tend to be. Um, there's no harm. Yes, they kind of get confused at the beginning, blah, 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 but it's, it's fine. And it's the best thing that you can do to your kid. I remember I came across, um, in a, like, um, Brazilians living in a, in a broad Facebook group and someone posted something about this mom. She was Brazilian, but she didn't want to, you know, she didn't want to kind of teach, not she didn't want to teach Portuguese to her kids, but it was too much work, uh -huh. you know? So okay. they ended up, você vai derrubar essa água? They ended up learning just speaking in English, you know? Mm -hmm. So the mom, the Brazilian mom, would speak in English for them. And then when they grew old and they went to Brazil on vacation, the kid told the mom, said, why did you do that with us? You took 50% mm -hmm. of our... Um, Heritage, yeah, maybe. Exactly, from us. Because mm -hmm. we went there and we cannot talk to our grandparents or our cousins and we cannot understand the jokes and stuff. All right. Talking about your, your experiences, maybe in the beginning, yes? So have you ever uh, gotten into trouble because of some, maybe some, some wrong translation, yes, that popped up, yes, for something that you needed or something that you didn't get at first because it was something, you know, a little bit different maybe from what you had here? Yes, I mean, I cannot, yes and yes and yes, but I cannot, rem, I cannot, like, I don't remember an example, uh -huh. but yes, all the time, up to this day, and then Daniel laughs at me, you know, or something. Oh, I remember one day I said, um, my sister-in-law said, <laughs> we were in a restaurant, she said, oh, I think I'm going to have a, a root beer. I was like, I a what? a root beer. Beer. Oh, the root beer. Okay. Yeah. And then I was like, I can have a beer too. <laughs> root beer. It's a soda. It's, <laughs> it's like a, a drink, a regular drink. Uh, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time. All right. And then, Gabi, actually, I have, uh, there's a secret, you know, session here now. Okay. 
called Help Us Out, okay? The idea is to translate a couple of expressions from Portuguese to English, okay? Oh, my goodness. Let's see if I know. All right. <laughs> if so, there, no, come here. <laughs> so uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you can ask for help, okay? Maybe Theo can help you out as well. So, <laughs> how can we say tamo junto in English? Tamo junto? Tamo junto. Yeah. <laughs> we are in this together. <laughs> Great, okay. Next one. É nós na fita. Mas que saco, é? <laughs> é nós na fita. Yeah, baby, I don't know. Yeah, baby, yeah, that's a good one. All right. People don't use that anymore, okay? I don't know uh, I, I don't know how long, okay, you've, you've been, you know, out of Brazil, but people don't use truta anymore, but truta. Bro. Truta. Bro, that's good. Okay. Mais fedido que meia de gambá. That's stinky, as, stinky as heck. People would say hell, but I don't want to use hell for the ex those expressions. That's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Gavi, I guess that's it. Uh, do you have any final message, any final tip that you would give someone who is either learning in the middle of this process of learning English? Absolutely. Like I said, you cannot, you cannot be afraid to make mistakes. If you make mistakes in Portuguese, then we have a problem because it's your first language. <laughs> But if you're going to make mistakes in English and you're worried about that, don't be like just, you know, just go with the flow. They're going to understand. And normally I say as well, if a gringo comes to talk to you and he's trying to speak in Portuguese, if he says something wrong, do, do, do you think something bad about him? No. Mm -hmm. You know, you actually you're happy that he's trying to speak your language, you know, so try to think the same way. You know, like, just do it. Again, if you've seen Friends a hundred million times, watch it again, English subtitles, English audio, you know? Yes. And oh, all yeah, so cute. <laughs> daddy, daddy, look. So that's, yeah, I think it's my, my golden advice. All right. So, guys, thank you so much. Gabi, thank, thank you so much. You know, it's a it's an excuse actually for me to talk. You know, for, to to everybody. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> All right, I'm I'll be able to to. I mean, hopefully, help someone. Yeah, for sure. Yes, for sure. <laughs> All right, so that's it. Okay. Bye there. Oh, don't worry, yeah, baby. John is right here. <laughs> Let me show you. <laughs> yep. Say hi to He wants to mess around with the, with the computer every time. Every time. I'm teaching. Yeah. I'm teaching, and then if I put him in my lap now, uh, when I put him on the floor, he's gonna come. If he wants to be here, <laughs> play around. He's still going by the stairs, and I have a gate up here. Uh -huh. I'm gonna have to get it.